Okay, hello everybody, my name is uh, Hans Jürgen Schönig, just call me Hans, it's uh, usually a lot easier. Um, so don't bless the gene or the people out with the name. Okay, so um, basically thank you for the invitation uh, to talk to you here. Um, uh, the topic of today is something I would call analyzing large data sets, and basically you can go on with this topic for a week or something like that. But basically I try to Get up, uh, come up with some, uh, something which might be interesting or something which might be beneficial for the internet. One question, who is using four of these things? Big boom, do you guys? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, because this talk yesterday was in Germany on the road, you know this country which keeps training you guys. I do it, so I'm not thinking about the team crowd. Who's first? Yes. Did you ask about that? Or is that good question? Yes, yes. No, I'm not thinking. Who's not? Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> No, I was in Germany yesterday and I uh, wrote the talk this, uh, this, uh, this morning on the airplane and I got a lot of inspiration from yesterday, <laughs> so maybe I'm just going to share with that. So who we are, we are basically a Postgres uh, support company, we do all kinds of cool Postgres stuff, and we recently opened an office in Tallinn, so if you guys need something, so I'm also checking that up here at the end. So, as I told me yesterday, I had a, a fair amount of inspiration yesterday in uh, Bavaria, or Bavaria as they call it in Germany. And actually I've, saw, I've seen my largest table in my life yesterday. It's a single table in Oracle with 340 billion rows, that's the B, right? So it's 80 terabytes compressed. Right? It's a very like one single table, beautiful database. And uh, for some reason, Oracle is starting to fall apart, which happens. And the reason why that happens is that it's a fairly large data set, I suggest. And this data set is fairly abused by those people using it, right? So it's data abuse instead of use of data. And I was so inspired by what I've seen yesterday because it was so incredibly disgusting. And I thought it's, it's a nice, uh, nice, uh, nice uh, thing uh, to share. People try to solve things with hardware, so they actually uh, had the idea of putting extra data in to fix all the design issues, right? I think the price tag is something like 5 million, uh, which is quite expensive just to not rewrite this. Okay? So, let's see. Guidelines to failure. So if you want to try this uh, practically, if you want guidelines to failure, here are just some of those guidelines to failure. And you remember, we're talking about 340 billion lines, and those guys are running a join on 14 tables. And the second one they are joining to is 8 billion. Kardec uh, already suggested that they might have had a performance problem, <laughs> uh, which is true. I don't know how, how did you figure out. And the second thing is no free aggregation. Everything was a live calculation. And I think that I couldn't even figure out what they were trying to figure out. Right? So this is a guideline of failure. And as, as I said, 80 terabytes compressed. No free aggregation. Single joints with 14 tables. Perfect. Right? So that's consultant's paradise. Right? It's a whole part of This big table once was one of the yeah, of course, yeah. Okay. So it took a while. I uh, think the query was marked in red uh, for performance. Because uh, then the text machine, we keep track of uh, small queries, so it's uh, for that query, so it's a red, red, and it's a big machine. Okay? So, I think for small data sets, you can basically do what you want. And if you got a million rows, I don't care, hardware is going to be out, there's no problem whatsoever. Yeah? Uh, yeah, they had so many bad queries in the list, in the Excel list, so that they had the feeling that Excel was running in the CDB because there were so many bad queries. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, what I said, if, uh, if there is a small data set, uh, life is going to be easy. I mean, if you've got a million rows, you can basically do everything. Hardware is so fast these days, uh, these days nothing is going to go wrong. But if it's a large data set, I mean, the student theory is going to kill you. I mean, if you're reading 80 terabytes of data, and if you say join it to get some sort of wear condition, it's going to kill you. That's it. So the thing is, if you're in this kind of situation that you're having real data, there is no 
such thing as a, as a magic parameter. You know? People come up uh, with the question, we can tune my PostgreSQL go on the wrong more stupid queries. And that's not what they say. That's what they say. But basically, that's what it all points down to. So there is no such thing as a magic parameter. So if you have a massive set of data, you clearly have to think about uh, what you're doing. And there are a couple of ways to do that. And uh, I wanted to show you, I, I mean, th this could go on for a week. I just wanted to show you some stuff which came to my mind this morning, how you could, how, what you could do in order to speed up stuff. So what I did here is I created a massive table with two entries, with uh, male and female. I hope nobody got discriminated here. <laughs> so. so to keep it simple, and secondly, what I did here, I created a second table with uh, a couple of people and uh, gender and some data. And to make it uh, super sexy, I even added some data here. So what I did here is I did some uh, generate series, which is going to give me 5 million rows. And I just did an equal distribution of gender. And everybody's happy, right? So we got a small table, 5 million rows. And it's totally sufficient to show you some interesting stuff, right? So. For a start, what we want to do here is simple aggregation as you would do it with uh, warehousing load. It says count how often does a gender show up. All right, so you got five million rows, and uh, I ran it in the, mo um, in the morning on my laptop, and it took 961 milliseconds. So, does anybody see something wrong with this query? How can we speed it up two times? Any suggestions? Let's see. So one query, we want to speed it up a bit. So it's small join, small nothing. One second, five million rows. Does anybody see a query? So well, you can fix that. There's actually a way to improve this. Huh? You count it and then do yeah. first count. So the thing is, there is actually a solution to the problem without changing a single parameter in Postgres. You can run it twice as fast. And the answer is something like this. Why is that going to happen? So this is uh, 526 million, uh, uh, 526 milliseconds. It's basically doing the same thing. What I'm doing here is I'm aggregating on the gender. So instead of male, female, what they get here is one, two, three, whatever. So you basically aggregate on the numbers. And then what I'm doing here is I'm taking the whole thing. And then at the end, once the aggregation is done, I'm going to join that to gender, and as you can see, this is twice as fast without changing a single parameter. Right? I mean, it works for reasonable result size, right? If you do this group by ID, it's not going to be the case. But even in the kind of, uh, in case of a very simple statement, which I think 90% of all people would have put it that way, you can already almost double the speed of the whole query, right? So this is what I said, there is no such thing as a magic parameter. There is no such thing, uh, there's only a thing like a, like a magic optimization. You have to think about the query and understand what the thing is doing. Because otherwise, if you have 80 terabytes of data, if you don't think about what you're doing, you're screwed anyway, right? So even this very simple stuff, as I said, can be speeded up almost two times, right? So it's 70% faster or so, right? So it's a very small example. And how does it work? Well, it must be a miracle. We don't understand it. It must be a miracle, so we're going to burn some virgins, and things are going to be fine. Right? So what's going on here is basically, um, in order to make you understand uh, more easily what, uh, how this works and what we're doing here, my problem is that it doesn't fit on the slide. So to make it easier and more easy, uh, easier to understand, what I'm doing here is I'm setting uh, parallel workers to zero, so we're going to go single core for the explanation. I mean, the whole thing I ran here was, was uh, multi-core, but in order for the sake of simplicity, we're going to go single core here. So here's what we're doing. This is the old query. And uh, as I said before, this is just one example which uh, is going to tell you how you can approach stuff and how to think about stuff in Postgres. What's going on here is that uh, 
due to some limitations of uh, the Postgres uh, implementation, actually, it's, it's uh, how the, the planner is organized, how the optimizer is organized, what Postgres has to do here is it has to join the person with the gender first. Right? So the structure of the optimizer is done in a way, at this point, this is going to be changed, but at this point the structure of the optimizer is done in a way that it has to join first and then aggregate later. So it's going to sequentially scan our genders, finite list, it's going to hash it, easy, it's going to sequentially join, uh, uh, sequentially read the person's table, which is going to be 5 million rows, it's going to do a hash join, which is the most efficient way here, and then on top of that there's going to be the aggregation, right, that's the count. And that's actually where the problem lies. Uh, Yesterday, they had the feeling that their stuff is going to break apart, and their solution was, well, let's think about TB2. Why not go to Exadata? Maybe TB2 is the final solution to everything, right? No, it's not. If you're doing select count star, where X not in 8 billion, TB2 is not going to change anything. I mean, so is Exadata. <laughs> so is Informix. So is anybody. If you do 300 billion not in, 8 billion, you're screwed, right? Regardless of the database engine you're doing. So the core message here is really that unless you understand what you're doing and unless you're thinking about your data set, what you want to know, and how would you do it if you were the database engine, you, you, you're fucked, right? There's no way around that, okay? And this is one way to approach it. So in this case, Postgres, you have to know that Postgres is always going to join first as of Postgres 10 and then apply the aggregation. So, which basically means that you have to do millions of lookups and millions of, of checks of your gender in order to, to do the aggregation. And this is, of course, a, um, a performance issue. So, let's go back to our super, 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 super query here. And in this case, uh, the width here is a so-called optimization barrier. So what Postgres is going to do is it's certainly going to do the width first, so the width is going to be executed regardless of what's going on there. And this result here of the X is going to be used in the, in the main select here. So the trick is that, that X is going to be executed first, regardless of what's going to happen. So there is no chance for, post, for the Postgres optimizer to join 5 million rows. We completely eliminated that. So what's going to happen here is, if we look at the plan, it's going to be super, super cool. Because we're still going to read the whole data set. We're going to group by gender. So here is x. And this is then going to be joined with, uh, with the other list. So it's only uh, two rows uh, in the join, which is going to be, of course, uh, way more efficient. right? So this is one way for, uh, to speed up this kind of query. right? So you just have to, to keep in mind how this whole system works and how this whole system uh, processes stuff. And if you have a fairly good understanding of what's going on here, then the, the fix is sometimes obvious. As I said, this is almost a two times improvement and I have not changed a single Postgres parameter. I have not changed the data. I have not changed the requirement. The only thing I did is I, I tried to understand how Postgres works. Okay? So if you're dealing with terabytes of data, there's no way around uh, to have a decent understanding of what's going on there. That's not going to happen. Okay, so lessons learned, typo, irrelevant is the word. So the difference in performance, if you're aggregating a thousand rows, you don't care if you're a millisecond faster or a millisecond slower in most cases, right? But in general, if a data set is so small, you, you, you won't get into trouble anyway. So if you, as I said, if you got 50,000 rows, you can basically do what you want. But also, the observation is that some very small stuff can make quite a difference here. And also, uh, the good news is, in, uh, for this example, um, there are people out there uh, working on the solution for Postgres 11, so that Postgres has a chance to swap the order, so they can aggregate first and join later. So that it has the option to do stuff. And this is especially important if you're going for a distributed system. So if you're looking for something which is, uh, which is running on 10 nodes uh, in parallel, 
this is a horribly important optimization because what you can do is you can you can send partial aggregates to the shards where you shard out a single table and then locally you only put a couple of rows together okay so I think somebody at EDP is working on this stuff also and one of our guys uh, currently located in Prague is also working on this kind of uh, stuff for base rail uh, aggregation and things like that so you can find the patches on the on the mailing list and if you have, uh, say, 100 terabytes of data and you want them aggregated fast, uh, maybe it, uh, it makes sense to either rewrite your queries or just uh, uh, send me an email. I will send you the code in order to fix that so the Postgres can already do that in core. OK? Any questions so far? Anybody? Who knew that? OK, so at least some people. OK, cool. So. Let's see what we can do here. That's also a very classical example if you have a lot of data. So suppose we got 20 years of data, we got some data for some sensors here, and suppose we're going to add a billion rows per year, and for some reason we kept them for 20 years. Because you get 20 years worth of data, which is just for the sake of simplicity uh, going to be 20 billion rows, and uh, what you want to do is, you just want to know, for every sensor, how many entries did we get for this year? I intentionally wrote the query old, old school, so that it's easier to read. Okay? So in this case, very simple query, and this is a very typical query. So you've got a large data set, you, you're, you're sucking out a fraction of data, and you just want to do some analysis on that. So, what are we going to do here? The first problem is that if you have an index on your time constraint, it's going to be a quite a large index. So as a rule of thumb, if you're indexing uh, integers, uh, an index entry is going to cost you something like 24 bytes, 30 bytes, something like that. Okay? So it's, uh, indexing is not free of charge. Okay? Indexing comes with a price tag. So if we go for, uh, for a standard uh, P3 index, what we got here is we've got 20 billion rows times 25 bytes is going to give you a 500 gigabyte index. Okay? And most likely, it's not the only column you're ever going to index, do you? Okay? Meaning that you're going to end up with terabytes of indexes here. Okay? But given this kind of query, so if you look at the query, it's usually very likely that they're going to filter on the, data, uh, on the data anyway. That's very likely. Okay? And there's also a second thing which is very likely, is that if you got measurement data, it's usually coming in sorted. Okay? It's somewhat sorted. Okay? It's not, maybe not totally sorted, but if you're, if you're reading data from all your sensors, it's somewhat sorted. So today you will get today's data, tomorrow you will get tomorrow's data, uh, next week you're going to get next week's data. Next week you're not going to get data from last year. That's usually not going to happen. Right? So the data is somewhat sorted. So we can use that. And uh, secondly, fetching 1 billion rows out of an index with 20 billion entries, that's going to kill you. <laughs> okay? So has anybody ever tried to read 1 billion rows out of 50 billion rows with an index? Did anybody ever dare to try? Well, it's going to be a nightmare, right? You're going to be faster even if you go sequentially in most cases. So in this case, the simple solution in my judgment is partition by year or partition by something useful. This is a couple of advantages. First advantage here is, um, in most cases, it's a lot more likely that people are, are working with recent data than with 20-year-old data. I've recently seen a fairly large data set uh, from social security system where people, you know, got uh, health stuff, you know, crutches and teeth and cream and pacemakers and whatever, you know, just medical stuff. It's a lot more likely that somebody is going to look up your wheelchair than the wheelchair of somebody who died 20 years ago, right? You, you, don't, you don't care. It's just historic data. You might use it for analytical purposes once in a while, but not go, you're not going to lose it live. 
Okay? So if you partition your data, what the planner is going to do, do here for you, so the Postgres optimizer, it's only going to look at partitions which really make sense, which means you got better cache hit rates. And in this case, what the thing does is you're going to get a sequential scan on a billion rows. You don't have to search them because you know it's a partition. You just take the whole thing. You don't have to search it anymore. Okay? So you most likely something like five times, ten times, twenty times faster. Okay? Not not because uh, Postgres doesn't like large tables. The the thing is you're abusing partitioning like a, like a free uh, half as index. You know? Okay? So you're gonna get a six scan, which is a lot better. And alternatively. If you're looking for something else, you can also use the so-called block range index. Uh, who, is, who, is, who knows what a block range index is? The Apart from you Postgres consultants out there. It is basically a partitioned index. Yeah, exactly. Who does not know what a block range index is? So they have to see how, how deep you go there. Karel, why are you showing up? <laughs> Fire. <laughs> Fired. <laughs> OK. So, um, we've got a B tree here, standard B tree, and the block range index here. I'm using a bring index here on this column. As you can see, it builds faster because it's easier. But let me explain what it does. First of all, it's a damn small thing. So, the B tree in my case here is 107 megabytes, that's uh, bytes with an M. And the print index here is 48K. That's 2,000 times smaller. So if your B tree is a terabyte, your print index is going to be 2,000 times smaller. So it's a 500 megabytes. OK, which is sort of a difference here. But of course, you always get what you pay for. So in this case, it's a free <laughs> event. So. Um, so what it does is it takes 128 blocks. So you, you've got in Postgres, as you know, you've got eight kilobyte blocks. So you take a block, you take a block, you take a block. So you take a bunch of blocks. So let's suppose first row, second row, third row. And then I'm going to take the minimum and the maximum of this megabyte of data. And that's what I'm going to store. I'm going to repeat the process. So in a B tree, I got the pointer to each of you. So a B tree uh, has a reference to everybody in the room. A print index just knows that somebody between 25 and uh, 65 is going to be here in this row. OK, I'm not pointing at you explicitly. Just <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so we know that, OK, there might be somebody in this row. There might be nobody in this row. OK, so this is what a print index does. So it's very small. But the price tag is that you need fairly high correlation. So if H is randomly distributed all over your place, it's very likely that within a megabyte of data, you're going to find a very small value and a very high value. Okay? If it's somewhat sorted, which is the case for dates, which is the case for invoice IDs, which is the case for support ticket numbers or something like that, uh, then this is going to be very beneficial. Any questions regarding the brain? So, next optimization, doing many things at once. So, if you go to work, if you go back home for every little task, it's going to be painful. So, when you go to work, stay there, get five things done, and then go home. And the same applies to database stuff. So, in Postgres, there are a couple of ways to, uh, to do things, to do many things at once. One way to do it is to have so-called grouping sets and partial aggregates. Secondly, you can use pre-aggregation, so you aggregate stuff, materialize stuff. And the third way, which is one of my favorite features, is so-called synchronized six scans. Who knows what a synchronized six scans is? And who is not a Postgres consultant? <laughs> OK. So synchronized six scans. May I use you for a second? Can you stand up? Can you turn around and look beautiful? <laughs> yes. Okay, the beautiful part is missing. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, Sigurd has six scan. I suppose he's a table, right? right? I could have used the whiteboard also, but you're fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> what are you doing here? Let's suppose we're running a sequential scan. We're digging into the table up to here. 
And suppose then a second aggregation is going to start. So instead of starting at the top again, we're going to look up, where's the other guy? And we figure that the other guy is half into the table, right? So we're also going to start half into the table and try to run the aggregation in parallel. And then when one guy is done, the second guy is just going to do the remains, right? So thank you very much. So, <laughs> so if you're lucky, it means that you can run 10 queries, but you're only going to read the stuff once. Okay? That's a synchronized six scan in Postgres. It's owned by default. So if you run stuff in parallel, it can be very beneficial because you only read it once. I mean, Postgres does not really try to keep them together. So if one is very fast and the other one is very slow, they're going to fall apart. But at least you tried. Okay? So if you run equally expensive stuff together at the same time concurrently, you might benefit from the effect that, uh, that you read data once, the file system is going to cache the stuff somehow, and you're very likely to get very high cache hit rate because you're basically sharing the IO. Uh, okay? So it's a very cool thing. So it can be beneficial to run stuff in parallel, just fire up all the aggregations on the same table at the same time. This can be quite beneficial actually. It's uh, cool stuff. So then comes the famous grouping set, written by a guy from India whose name is Atri Shama, who recently uh, married. I was afraid to say suicide, but then he married. So uh, what happened here is, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a column to this scenario, right? So to show what a grouping set does and the partial aggregates. So I'm going to add a column, which is age. And what I did here, age is random. Okay, so let's see how we do that. Simple query, roll up. Who has never seen roll up before? Hands up. Quite some people. Who has seen roll up before? Who knows somebody who has seen roll up before? <laughs> who got the feeling that his neighbor lied? <laughs> okay, roll up. Uh, what it means is basically male, female, total. It's like running two group by statements. It's like running group by gender, which gives me two rows, mm. and then have no group by, just add up. So roll up is what you see, basically, if you, if you open the newspaper, you're going to see roll up, right? You see people from Estonia, people who are not from Estonia, all the people, right? So you see this kind of stuff very often, that the bottom line, the famous bottom line, okay? And this is quite beneficial because if you do it at once, you're only going to read the data once. Right? So it's like male, female, total. It's like one query. It's called a grouping set. So it's a grouping set. So it's quite nice, actually, because it's going to save you a, a bit of coding. And it's also going to save you a lot of, uh, of uh, I.O. because you're only going to read the data once, in, most, in many cases. And secondly, you can be even more fancy. You can have partial aggregates. So we're running even more aggregates at once. So what we got here is we got group by gender. So we've got one line per gender. And then we say, who is young and who is <laughs> not young? Or who is more than 50? Anybody older than 50 here? Anybody? Hands up. Are you still able to lift your hands? Otherwise, make yourself known. <laughs> I still have five years. Five years left? Yeah, before uh, falling into the sensory. But you do remember. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So in this case here, we got 2.5 million girls. And then here, we have a partial aggregate. So what happens here is that we're only going to filter parts of the data into the aggregate. Right? It's like running a separate query for young and old and everybody and whatever. So here, basically, if we do it the traditional way without advanced SQL, this would be one query, this would be one query, this would be one query, and this would be one query. So we have to do four or five queries just to end up with the same answer. And again, if we're talking about 100 terabytes of data, that's going to make a difference, right? Okay. So this is, again, doing stuff uh, at once. It's also quite beneficial if you've got a, a hell amount of data, because usually I always the problem. 
Imagine you have a terabyte of data and you've got a 10 gigabit network connection. It roughly means one gigabyte a second. So it's a thousand seconds. That's 20 minutes just to read it over 10 gig network. So if you only have to read it once, it does make a difference. If you have 100 terabytes of data, I mean, it's, it's, you have to process it. That's one problem. But you have to read the stuff, right? So suppose you go to a favorite hardware store. You're going to buy yourself 10 SSDs. Put them all in the RAID 0, right? Everybody's working concurrently. It's going to get you 5 gigabytes per second. It's still 200 seconds per terabyte. Three minutes per terabyte, but you got 100 terabytes, OK? So even if you got five gigs per second, which sounds awesome, you're still dead. OK, you somehow have to get rid of, of the reading part, because you can't do caching anymore at 100 terabytes of data, can you? OK? So finally, I want to uh, conclude with those are just some ideas. That's not a complete uh, tutorial on how you, how you work with uh, a lot of data. But those are just uh, some ideas which naturally came to me yesterday in Germany when looking at this Oracle database. It came to me naturally. <laughs> um, and, this, and what I said, most of it is not only true for Postgres. A lot of it is also true for most other systems. Right? So uh, reading a lot of data is going to take time on every system. Right? That's nothing new. If you're writing stupid query, it's going to suck. That's nothing new. So a lot of that is also true for other systems which are not Postgres. So finally, I want to thank you for your attention. And are there any questions you are free to ask? Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Just one question. Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, Partitioning system do you uh, recommend? Depends on what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I have a not big table, just 10 gigabytes, but with a large amount of indices on it. Oh. <laughs> Let's see. Let's fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's exchange coffee for a fix. <laughs> it's called trade, you know. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Any other questions? Anybody? Uh, actually, when going back to your last example of the SQL code, uh, yeah, this one, uh, could you in really broad uh, lines uh, give us some kind of explain plan for this solution yes. versus the separate statements? Yes. In Postgres 10, this is going to be, I mean, forget the join. Let's suppose there was no join. Mm -hmm. Okay, I only put the join in to make it more spectacular. Yeah. You wouldn't write it that way. Mm -hmm. But suppose there was no join. What would happen, it would be a, a sequential scan. And in Postgres 10, this is called the mixed aggregate. Mm -hmm. It's six scan. It's one six scan, and then there is a bunch of, of CPU intense aggregates. But that would be a straight six scan with a, a mixed aggregate on top. Mm. OK. And the alternative to that, well, basically writing uh, five at least, uh, three statements yeah. would be kind of, is it linear? Linear I well, well, I wouldn't, well, linear in a way that, I mean, if you have one statement, and suppose it's only count star, mm -hmm. it's going to be faster because it's less CPU. Mm -hmm. right? So the thing is, it's going to eat up more CPU. Mm -hmm. right? But if you have uh, uh, multi-core statements going on, but limited I.O., I, I wouldn't bet on the word linear, because mm -hmm. somebody will come up with an example where it's not. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty going to be a lot faster. Mm -hmm. you, you're going to eat more CPU at once, mm -hmm. which used to be an issue some time ago, but with Postgres, at, uh, Postgres parallel queries, you just get out. Mm -hmm. OK? So any more questions or any remarks in case I made a mistake? <laughs> OK, so thank you very much. Thank you.